the need, it just keeps increasing. The clients, it just every week is more and more clients, and every week we have less and less diapers. Andre Gamboa works for the Apostles House in Newark, where a very few small boxes of disposable diapers sit in the corner of a storage room. She says families that can't afford to pay 70 to 80 bucks a month for diapers come here for help, but declining donations can't keep pace with the rising need, so Gamboa's rationing diapers. And we cannot even give them a box per client. We only give one of the packs that comes inside of the box. So that's not even enough. It makes you feel really sad. Uh, we always try to go the extra mile, but it gets to a point where we just ran out of diapers and that's it for the month. We used to do like 100 families a month per month. So now we're up to like almost 250. And this is just families. Janine Reeves runs a diaper bank in Essex County, part of a national network that also supplies organizations like Apostles House. The cost of diapers spiked 12 percent nationwide this year after price hikes in spring by Procter & Gamble and Kimberly Clark, the two firms that control 80 percent of the U.S. diaper market. I have seen them prices go up substantially since COVID, I mean, even since last year. Why the price hikes? Well, consider what goes into a diaper. We mean to manufacture one. You see all of this puffy absorbent material? It comes from wood pulp, which comes from lumber, which is also required to build houses in a very hot real estate market. Supply and demand. Petroleum also comprises absorbent components in disposable diapers, and inflation's driven oil and gas prices so high, Senator Chuck Schumer's asking President Biden to use U.S. petroleum reserves to ease pain at the pump. Overall, consumer prices soared 6.2 percent in October, the largest single-year spike in 30 years. Supply chain bottlenecks only compound the problem. Apostles House has only two small cases of infant formula left. 85 percent of that market's controlled by just three companies. We need donations, not only diapers, but food for our food pantry, like canned goods. You're going to see our shelvings are very empty. And before, we always were, like, stuck. Normally, we have 600 turkeys. For this year, we only have 100. And that is because how hard it is to get a turkey right now mm -hmm. because of the same. The supplies is very, very low. Moreover, most daycare centers require parents to supply their kids' own diapers. What's a working parent to do? Reeves says one mom risks running out at home. The diapers that I give her, she splits them in half. She takes half of them to the daycare. So that actually takes away from what she has at home. Reeve says she suspects some people are hoarding diapers and wipes. During the pandemic's height, empty shelves drove one desperate mom to tears on TikTok. How am I supposed to diaper my child <laughs> if I can't afford to buy 20 at a time like you can? For now, it's more an affordability problem, which brings us to Sarah Frank, whose Livingston condos piled high with boxes and bags of diapers collected this month, all donated via Amazon wish list. 13 to 15,000 diapers, all sizes, all all headed to Apostle's house. We had our son about eight months ago, and I realized, you know, firsthand, all the expenses that go into caring for a new baby, it was overwhelming. So I made a commitment I was going to give back to, you know, new moms and dads, and I thought a diaper drive would be a great way of doing that. That's a blessing. We are so grateful and we are so happy because of the amount of pampers that we are going to get from her. She's overwhelmed. Meanwhile, Franks will keep her diaper drive going. The link's on our website. I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJ Spotlight News.